this video, we're going to talk about dependency management in big picture. What are the types of dependencies, how they are represented on Jira site on issue level, and also what are the features available in big picture that will make it very easy to you to find whatever information you may need about the, those dependencies. Also, I will show you some neat tricks that will help you uh, to work faster and more efficiently in big picture. This video is part of our efforts to provide the best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave comment if you have any further questions below and remember that you can always reach out to us for one of our other services. All right, so let's start from covering the basics. Uh, most of this video will be done in the Gantt module. So this is where I am in, I'm displaying the Gantt module of one of my, of my projects. And now let's start with talking about what are the types of dependencies. You can expand this, uh, this many. And basically there are two types of dependencies, strong and soft ones. The major difference between those two types is that soft dependency will never cause other tasks to move, right? So if you have two tasks linked with soft dependency, you move one task, it will never cause moving of the other task on the timeline. These soft dependencies are used mostly in agile planning in the board module. We had other videos about that, so uh, if you're interested in that, I'll refer you to, to those videos. Uh, and in the Gantt chart, these soft dependencies are displayed as this kind of a dashed line. So you can see I have one over here. There is soft dependency between task uh, AP12 and task AP20. These are the soft dependencies. Uh, one more time, they never cause the, the dependent task to be moved on the timeline. On the other hand, the strong dependencies, these are the dependencies that are default dependencies for the Gantt chart and they might force other tasks to be moved. So if I, for example, delay end date of this task, you'll see that some other tasks that have dependency with this one will be pushed on the timeline. This is a major difference because strong tasks with, with strong dependencies uh, are a bit more complex. We'll be focusing on them, but, but most of the features that we'll be discussing is by actually covering uh, both of those categories of dependencies. Both of those categories of dependencies also are reflected in Jira on, on the task level. So the AP12 task was a good idea, was a good example. Now, if we would enter there, we would see that this task basically has links that uh, that represent those dependencies. So the moment we create that kind of a link, either uh, one of the four links representing strong dependency has to be done after, has to be before, uh, done before, has to be started together with, and has to be ended together with. These four types of links will uh, will result in 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 the fact that we will see the strong dependency on the Gantt chart. On the other hand, blocks uh, link type will be represented as soft dependency. Uh, and of course, this can change depending on big picture configuration, but these are the default settings. And, and if you did not change anything in configuration, then it will be like that. Okay, so let's return to our Gantt chart. And as I said, I will be showing you mostly the strong dependency. So this is what I'm displaying. And right away that you can see these strong dependencies in the gun chart are displayed as arrows, not dashed arrows as for soft, but uh, just just uh, normal arrows with a, with a hard line. Uh, and pretty nicely we can see what is dependent on what, right? So there is this task AP14 is dependent on, uh, on AP12, and there are two other tasks dependent on the AP14, some other task with further dependencies. Uh, right from the start, I will say that uh, over here, you can see that this task is highlighted with that, that kind of orangish color. 
this is due to the fact that this dependency for some reason cannot be respected. This means that big picture cannot move these tasks to the future like that so that the dependency is respected. This can be due to a lot of reasons. This is really complex topic dependent on existing dependencies with tasks in this project and outside of this project, right? Because there can be some other tasks from outside of the project that with uh, which the dependency also exists. But also it can be related to the structure of our task and task uh, scheduling mode. So um, this whole scheduling topic is pretty complex. We won't be covering that uh, in the detail here. Uh, there are some other videos on our channel related to that. Also, if you will be interested in really in-depth uh, discussion of this topic, you, you might be interested in, in one of our courses. So have a look at that. But let's see what kind of information we see for these dependencies and how we can easily move around and use different features to, uh, to get the information that we need. If we click on one of those dependencies, we will see dependency details. So we'll see what is the source of the dependency and target of dependency. Uh, it might seem not needed over here because there is a nice example where, you know, both of the tasks are really close to each other. We see what is the source and target of dependency, but very often for larger projects where we have like hundreds or thousands of tasks over here, we may not see right away the task for example, the target of dependency, it could be somewhere way lower and we'll just see that there is an arrow growing from here somewhere to, to, the, to the bottom, right? So if we click on this, we right away can see what is the target or source depending on which direction of dependency we'll, we'll select. So yeah, pretty neat information. We'll also see what this what is the type of dependency. So for hard dependencies and one soft dependency, uh, also the lag time and the ASAP mode. The lag time basically tells us what should be the uh, period of time between those two tasks if we want that. So if I, for example, pick three over here, you'll see that in a moment this task should be moved and, uh, and the free day between these tasks will be available. ASAP mode basically tells that the following task should be started as soon as the or the target task should be started as soon as the source uh, task uh, is finished. Uh, it did not move. Let's have a zoom in and see why. Okay, we see there is a three days of uh, of uh, time between those tasks. It's just that two of them are on the weekend. So I'll expand it even more so it is a bit more pronounced. And yeah, you can see that there is seven days between those two tasks. Uh, so this is basically the de data details of dependency. Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, so <laughs> dependencies by themselves are, are not, not a hard hard thing, and it doesn't store a lot of information. At least not more, much more than that. Of course, we can put some description to that dependency uh, if we need to have more details, not just the the arrow between those two tasks. Uh, all right, this looks pretty nice and easy, but this is because this is the data prepared for the video, right? It's very rare that we see that kind of nice uh, situation where the tasks that are dependent uh, on each other are one under the other. So it just looks very nice here. Very often there is dozens of dependencies here. Uh, there is a lot of tasks, so very often these dependency go, these arrows representing the dependencies are just mostly uh, vertical lines linking to tasks that are very far from each other. And in general, that way of displaying dependencies, by that way I mean the arrows, becomes really hard to read because you just have this, you know, tangled arrows, just spaghetti of dependencies. It's, it's really hard to notice something. How can we approach that? Well, the easiest way would be to change the display option, right? So if we'll set to collapsed, you'll see that now we do not see the arrows. We just see the numbers at the beginning or end of the, of the task. This basically tells us with how many tasks 
uh, end of this task is linked with dependency. So we can click on this and get some more details. Okay, that's cool. We already see the description of the tasks that are dependent and we can actually snipe to the task. This will bring the task with which the dependency exists into focus. So you will see that, yeah, for me, it just moved my screen a bit and, and highlighted this row because this is the task that I wanted to see. Uh, and by the way, if I click on this task, or on this dependency, you see that arrows appear just for this uh, for the this thing, just dependencies from this task. So we do not have the full spaghetti of, of uh, dependencies from all the tasks, but just this one, it just a bit easier to, uh, to have a clearer picture. Uh, so for large and complex project, I would suggest to have the uh, collapsed display. Uh, it's not it might seem not as great because we do not see everything on first sight, but you'll see anyway that for large and complex projects, you won't see everything for on, on the first sight because even with expanded dependency, it will be just too much to handle and to understand collapsed on our way better. What else is interesting here? Uh, over here on the right, we have an info bar. In the info bar, we also have uh tab related to dependencies it shows us dependencies from bit different bit, bit different perspective right so it just so so shows us grouping of the types of dependencies so again end to start uh end to end and so on for for hard dependencies i'm just using two in my project that's why we have two over here and one for soft dependencies now i can expand this and see specific uh, information about dependencies. So I see what are the sources of dependencies, what are the targets, again, the tasks, uh, whoever dependency is in ASAP mode, and what is the lag time. Now, there are two nice things about here. First of all is I can focus on source or focus on target of dependency. So again, it will bring uh, my screen uh, right to the source or target. I'm clicking on this one. Yeah. AP12 is highlighted in the, and suddenly it got in the middle of my screen. I can focus on target. AP14 should now be highlighted. Let's double check. Yep, AP14. So it's a bit easier way to, uh, to move around, especially if you're looking for specific dependencies. So let's say that I'm interested in dependencies related to task AP47. I can just type this over here. And you can see that I see now all the dependencies coming in or out of task AP47. Of course, I can now focus on source or just iterate through uh, the tasks that are linked with these dependencies, right? So I can go one by one and check if something is happening. So uh, I really like this, uh, this dependency tab in InfoBar uh, because I'm relating again and again to the complex projects with a lot of dependencies. It just allows us to narrow down our view to the dependencies that are only interesting to us at specific moment in time. Okay, there are some topics I did not cover in this video, like how to manage dependencies across multiple projects or in portfolio, or how to check uh, what would be impact on our plan if we make a change on the task that has dependencies with other tasks. And I did not cover that for a good reason. And that is either because there is multiple ways to approach that, like, like in case of dependencies management in portfolio, and selecting proper way is dependent on what is your Jira setup and what is your way of working. So if you're interested in that, reach out to us, we can have a talk and we can suggest you what would be the best approach for you. Or, like in case of what would be the impact of a change in our plan, these are the features that are related to some other features and big picture. I would have to, you know, go one by one of these features and just bore you with details. So in that case, if you're interested in this one, uh, you can check one of our trainings. We cover it there in depth. So that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.